It's early 2005 and Madonna is at another crossroads in her long and storied career. A few months earlier she completed the very successful reinvention tour in support of 2003's American Life. Although well received for the most part by critics, the album has been a commercial disappointment, leaving Madonna in an uncertain position moving forward. But true to form, Madge soldiers on and decides to dust off her dancing shoes and to head back to her most natural habitat, the dance floor. And in doing so, she scores one of the biggest hits and albums of her entire career. So just how did Madge pull off such a momentous comeback over two decades after her first release? Who were all the people involved in the making of the Confessions album? What incident a few short months before the release threw the whole campaign into jeopardy? How did British pop star Rachel Stevens inspire her? Why did David LaChapelle pull out from directing the hung up video at the last minute? Why did American Radio for the most part ignore the record? So many questions, let's find out. Whilst American Life the album top charts around the world, including the UK and US, long term sales weren't great. In fact, at the time it became the lowest selling album of Madonna's career. The lead single of the same name where Madge rapped about her trainer, butler and bodyguards was met with a mixed reaction. It reached number two in the UK but stalled at number 37 stateside. And Madonna being Madonna, there was a huge fiasco over a video. Only this time Madge deemed said video to be potentially too controversial and pulled it all together. The video depicting imagery of war and violence was especially ill-timed considering the Iraqi war had just begun. The follow-up singles did reasonably well internationally but failed to get much attention in the States. The accompanying tour, the reinvention tour, was however a big success the following year. And just to clarify, I am not saying in any shape or form that American Life was a failure and I know that the album has become a firm favourite with fans over the years. But for many it did represent a dip in her career and it definitely left Madge with the pressing question of where to go next. In early 04 Madge was reported to be working on a stage musical called Hello Suckers with long term collaborator Patrick Leonard. Around that time Madge was also working on a musical film with Luc Besson who incidentally directed the Love Profusion video. On the song Exploder podcast Madge explained that the musical involved time travel and lots of different areas Eras, including the legendary decade of disco, the 70s. And Luc Basson wanted her to write music from different eras to fit the movie. So Madge got to work collaborating with a number of producers, including her old friend Mirwes and English musician Stuart Price. Stuart Price had first worked with Madonna on the Drowned World Tour and was promoted to musical director on the Reinvention Tour. He also co-wrote Ecstatic Process on the American Life album and won a Grammy in 2005 for his remix of No Doubts It's My Life. So back to the story of Hung Up. Madge was still writing her 70s themed songs for her musical and she turned to Stuart for help asking him for ABBA at Studio 54 style tracks and coincidentally he had just the thing. In an interview with Music Week from 2022, Stewart talked about how he first got the idea of sampling ABBA. Six months beforehand I had a DJing residency at a club in Liverpool called The Mask. One night I was coming back, it was 5am on the M1, I was falling asleep, I wasn't driving and Radio 2 was on. Gimme 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 started playing and in that dream state I thought wow that would be a really good sample for a song. So just before I went up to play in the mask again, I quickly hacked the sample into a track that I could play in my DJ set. It was immediate. The whole room felt pretty special. I played it for the next couple of months, but like most DJs, I wore out my records and moved on. So when Madonna mentioned ABBA, I suddenly went, well there is one thing. And Madge loved what she heard and she immediately had a melody in mind for the track. And that song of course became Hung Up. They came up with the chorus first and the verses later on and the first vocal recorded ended up being the final vocal used. When Hung Up was finished, Madonna loved it so much it persuaded her to change plans. She decided to scrap the musical and Luc Besson allowed her to keep the songs she recorded for herself. 
and she decided that her next album would be a dance record. And instead of making it with Mirwes, she would do most of it with Stewart. In an interview with The Observer from late 05, Madge talked about why she gave Stewart the top job. Before now, I just didn't feel that I knew you well enough. I wasn't 100% confident in your songwriting skills, if I may be so honest. I didn't think you were ready. The amount you've grown from that record to this one is huge. But I only intended to write a few songs with you. I intended to do the bulk of the record with Mirwes, and then it turned out to go in the other direction, because the first song, Hung Up, resonated so monstrously. Both Madge and Stuart Price have spoken about their no-frills approach to recording the record. All of the songs done with Stuart were done in the loft of his apartment in Maid Vale, northwest London, and nobody else was in the studio with them. It was a basic approach to making records, which Madonna thought was key for producing good dance music. In an interview with Music Week from 2022, Stewart talked about his work setup with Madge. So our studio days would typically be us working together in the afternoon. Overnight, I would come up with a new song or a template which I would send to her. Then she would either arrive with something or she's very capable of switching on and writing in that moment. There's a lot to be said for a tireless work ethic and no entourage. It was just two people writing. If you're focused, you can achieve a lot in a short period of time. He also played the new tracks whilst he was DJing to gauge the audience's reaction to the new music. Whenever I was DJing, I'd take the instrumental versions out with me, I had my camera with me, and the next day I'd tell Madonna, this is what a thousand people in Liverpool looked like last night dancing to our song. You can work on a song for 12 hours, but I guarantee you'll know within the first 10 seconds of putting it on at a club whether it works or not. So these songs were tested on unwitting subjects throughout Europe. Madge was also carrying out her own test marketing at the time, as she explained on the Song Exploder podcast. I had this driver at the time. I had to sit in the front seat with him because I felt I had to show him how to drive the car and it was a little disconcerting because London is really crazy to drive in but like to distract him because he was sweating bullets. So I put the CD in the car. I said, what do you think of this? He said, oh my God, this is so good. This is really good. He almost crashed into a stop sign and I fired him the next week but he was so blown away by the song, he couldn't even drive the car in a straight line. So I thought that was a good sign. In fairness, if I had to drive Madge around London, I'd be sweating bullets too. And of course, Madge and Stuart still had to overcome the hurdle of getting clearance from ABBA to sample their music. The Swedish legends traditionally don't allow anyone to use their music, with the one notable exception being the Fugees and their 97 track, Rumble in the Jungle for which the group had used the bass line from Name of the Game. Over the years, Madonna has always maintained that she wrote to ABBA, begging and pleading with them to allow her to use the sample on Hung Up. But on the Song Exploder episode, Madge says that she did in fact go one step further and actually met them in person to persuade them. Either way, the Swedish superstar said yes, and Pop Genius was given the go-ahead. Benny Anderson from ABBA was quoted as saying at the time, we said yes this time because we admire Madonna so much and always have done. She's got guts and has been around for 21 years. Hung Up is really good. If it wasn't any good, we would not have said yes. It's a wonderful track, 100% solid pop music. Swedish producers Bloodshine Avent, I think that's how you say it, wrote two songs on Confessions, How High and Like It or Not. They had previously worked on Britney Spears' huge hit Toxic from 04 and the following year they won a Grammy for Best Dance Recording for the song, beating big names such as the Chemical Brothers and Basement Jacks. In an article from a Swedish newspaper, Chris Carlson, one half of the songwriting and production duo, talked about what it was like the first time Madonna contacted him. Madonna herself called me. I was at the beach in Thailand when my cell phone rang and it was her. I can't even explain how unreal it felt to stand there with Madonna on the line. The Queen of Pop in an interview with Swedish TV channel SV1 in late 05 talked about what inspired her to work with Bloodshy and Avent. I like the records they did with other people. My daughter was listening to Rachel Stevens and also Britney Spears and they worked on tracks for both those girls' records and I felt they were really catchy and danceable and I liked them so I wanted to work with them. 
In an interview with the website Gone Trending, Christian Carlson, one half of the production duo, talked about what it was like working in the studio with Madge. I think one of the most memorable moments in the studio was working with Madonna because she was probably one of the most hands-on huge artists. I didn't expect her to be listening to everything in the production. She was like on me, sitting behind me, being like, hey, hey, wait, she's amazing. In an interview in December 04, Swedish producer Anders Bag said that he and a songwriting partner, Per Lerström, had submitted a number of demos to Madge for her consideration. Two of which she liked enough to write lyrics for and one of them became Get Together. Madonna recorded her vocals in Sweden and seemed to like the song but not the production as Stuart Price reworked the song in London. Anders Bag had already written hits for Janet Jackson such as All Night and Play for Jennifer Lopez. Jump was originally given to Madonna by her brother-in-law Joe Henry who also co-wrote Don't Tell Me and Mirwes co-wrote two songs for the album Future Lovers and Let It Will Be. The Hung Up video was originally meant to be directed by David LaChapelle, but as I'm sure you already know, Swedish director Johan Rank, who had directed Nothing Really Matters, ended up doing the job instead. Madge had chosen La Chapelle off the back of his Rise documentary about the crumping dance style. On an episode of the web series Jan Calls, David LaChapelle talked about why he didn't end up doing the video. I gotta thank her because honestly I've never said no to a job before. We were in pre-production for the video hung up when she was screaming at me. I had just finished the documentary Rise and I had really worked so hard. I was tired. I wanted all my life to do a Madonna video. When she was screaming at me on the phone I couldn't take it. The song was good and everything was in place. We were doing the job and I remember that being so mean. The photo shoots were always so stressful with her. I thought god I can't go through with this. I got very quiet because she was yelling at me. I put the phone down. It was a cell phone actually. My agent was sitting beside me and you know Macaulay Culkin and Home Alone. She's like, you hung up on Madonna and the funny thing was the song was hung up. In an interview with MTV in 2006, Johan Rank, who actually ended up directing the video, said that Madonna called him at the time, in his words, desperate. Johan hadn't heard the song, so she sent over a record company rep within an hour to play him the song, after which he agreed to do it. Then she told him he needed to go to LA the very next day to meet with her choreographer and stylist. Madonna's solo dance part only took three hours to film at Pineapple Dance Studios in London and the arcade part at the end of the video was done in Trocadero in Piccadilly, also in London. When asked a few weeks later by Attitude magazine about David LaChapelle, Madonna had this to say. We had creative differences. We're still friends, I'd love to work with him. He just wanted to make the video in a documentary style but I just did that and I want this to be all about dance. The photo shoot for the album was done on the 11th of August 05 by Stephen Klein who Madge has worked with a number of times since. On the Dolce & Gabbana campaign and the controversial Marilyn Monroe photo shoot for V Magazine. Apparently they artificially changed her hair colour making it a strong red colour to pop against the black backdrop. The photo shoot is referenced in the hung up video in a sequence before the last chorus. The photos were of course used for the album booklet, tour book and a number of magazine covers over the following months, including Rolling Stone and Q magazine. The photo shoot took inspiration from Ken Russell's rock opera film Tommy from 1976, in particular the Smash the Mirror scene and Tina Turner's Acid Queen scene. Just days after the shoot, Madge fell from her horse whilst out riding in the English countryside, breaking eight ribs. In the immediate aftermath of the accident, there was speculation that the album would be delayed. But Madge, ever the trooper, was back at work two weeks later in London, filming a commercial for Motorola to help promote the record. Madge and Warner were clearly very confident in the album as they chose to release it in the last quarter of the year, which as I'm sure you already know is the busiest time of year for music sales. Madonna performed at that year's MTV European Music Awards, the BBC's Children in Need, Parkinson in the UK, Fett and Das in Germany, and she also did one-off concerts at GAY London and Coco Camden. She also appeared on MTV's TRL in New York and dropped by Letterman where he dared her to get back up on a horse, which she gamely accepted. 
There were also regular adverts on British TV promoting the album. Her documentary film of the reinvention tour I'm Going to Tell You a Secret was also broadcast on Channel 4 in the UK and MTV in the States to help build excitement. She also embarked on a promo trip to Japan in the first week of December and Madge partnered with a number of brands including Motorola to help promote the album. In an interview with Billboard at the time, Madge gave a rare insight into the business side of her personality. I'm a businesswoman. The music industry has changed. There's a lot of competition and the market is glutted with new releases. You must join forces with other brands and corporations. You're an idiot if you don't. Hung Up when it was released in mid-October became an instant classic, reaching number one in 41 countries. It has become her biggest single of the 21st century and her biggest digital single ever, selling over 9 million units. And the album released on the 14th of November went to number one almost in every country it was released. To date, it has sold over 10 million copies worldwide. In an interview with New York Post columnist Liz Smith, Madge talked about her reaction when she got the news that the album had gone to number one in America. It was my husband who told me the album was number one in America. I was shocked, stunned, happy. I said, we have to celebrate. So we opened a bottle of champagne, not something I usually do. I had a glass and then I sat and cried for 20 minutes. Really, so many conflicting emotions, but basically tears of joy. Don't let anyone tell you that commercial success doesn't matter. The second single from the album, Sorry, became her 12th UK number one and the third and fourth singles, Get Together and Jump, also went top 10 in the country. The Sorry video, a sequel to Hung Up, was directed by Jamie King, who normally organises Madge's tours. The Get Together video performance was taken from the Coco Camden performance with sci-fi animation by Logan Studios. Whilst Hung Up got some airplay in America, the album's three other singles were pretty much ignored by radio stateside. This was a few years before acts like Lady Gaga and Calvin Harris brought the EDM sound to the mainstream in America, and the confession sound didn't really work on radio there at the time. In June 2006, Billboard magazine wrote a piece analysing the failure of the confession singles to get airplay in the US. Madge's fans at the time had even set up an online petition addressed to the heads of major US radio corporations regarding Madge's absence from the airwaves there. American airwaves were so hip hop driven in 0506 and many younger fans had grown up on R&B hip hop influenced music at that point and pure pop dance didn't resonate with them. Artists such as Nelly Furtado and Mariah Carey were both dominating American radio at the time with their hip hop inspired sounds. Only a few short months after Confessions release, Rihanna had a huge hit with S.O.S, a pop dance track which also sampled a retro classic from a similar period as Gimme Gimme Gimme. But according to radio programmers at the time, S.O.S had more hip hop credibility and sounded more modern compared with Madge's more retro sounding record. And even though they wouldn't openly admit it, ageism was probably the real issue. They just didn't want to play records by a woman who was almost 50 at the time. The accompanying Confessions tour which followed in May 06 was a huge commercial and critical success and Madge picked up countless awards for the record including Best Female Artist at the Brits in 06 and Best Dance Electronic Album at the Grammys the following year. Madge also performed at the Grammys in 06 with Damon Albarn's virtual band The Gorillas. After the enormous success of the album, Stuart Price of course went on to become a hugely successful producer, working with The Killers, Take That, Robbie Williams and Kylie among many others. He also worked on Dua Lipa's hugely successful Future Nostalgia album. Dua Lipa herself cited Confessions as a key influence for the record. Many Madonna fans consider Confessions as a highlight from a career filled with them. It is widely regarded as Madonna's last great album and one of the best single runs she's ever had. Over 20 years and 10 albums into her career, Madge managed to create pure pop magic, the kind many aspire to but few ever attain. And Confessions helped extend even further Madonna Louise Ciccone's reign as the queen of pop. Thanks for watching. If you have any thoughts on anything in this video, please leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my other videos.